Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube channel, and today's video, guys, I wanted to sneak in one last movie review for 2023 for the new A24 film, The Iron Claw, which was a huge, huge surprise for me, and so I wanted to be able to make a video where I can go at least a little bit more in-depth on this one. Um, so before we do, make sure you stay tuned for my few remaining end-of-the-year rankings. We have the biggest... Um, surprises, which definitely expected this movie to be on there, as well as the biggest disappointments of 2023. And then, of course, my end of the year tier list with all of the movies that I watched in 2023. And then we can finally uh, begin to move on to talking about the 2024 pool of movies, which is very, very exciting. Uh, and if you haven't checked it out yet, yesterday I uploaded the biggest box office successes and flops of 2023. So if you haven't checked that out, go check it out. And so, um, let's get into it. I don't have a whole lot of time for this video, and I could honestly be going on for a long time talking about this movie, so I hope I don't ramble on too much, but I did want to get at least a little bit in-depth on this movie and give you guys my, uh, deeper thoughts on this, and uh, The Iron Claw... I honestly was not expecting a whole lot out of this movie when I uh, when I decided to go see it. This was kind of just going to be another one of those movies that I was going to watch in December to catch up to my goal of 50 movies for 2023. And really, what this movie uh, what what this movie was what another movie that I was watching in December should have been, which was The Boys in the Boat, which was another sports drama movie but that turned out to be one of the biggest disappointments of the year with a lot of underdeveloped characters uh and the iron claw kind of took its spot and really really surprised me with just how emotional and how gut-punching and tragic this movie was at this um all at the same time this was a very very good movie and uh, sadly will probably get overshadowed by a lot of other movies this year but I think that there are some Oscar worthy nominations in here and I, I really hope that that this movie is at least in the conversation uh, when they are deciding uh, who gets some of the Oscar nominations and awards and whatnot but the Iron Claw I think whether or not you are a wrestling fan or not you will really really like this movie because if you don't know, the the Iron Claw is basically about this the Von Erich family, which was this wrestling family in the 80s that got really, really popular um, and um, kind of rose uh, to prominence, um, starting out in the state of Texas and then just jumping the ranks. And eventually, uh, at the beginning part of this movie, as we see, they're challenging some of the top dogs in the wrestling sphere at the time period. You got Ric Flair thrown in here and a bunch of other... A really popular wrestlers in in the 80s and so you would think on the surface level like oh okay this seems to be like a, maybe a sports drama underdog story and it's got Zach, Zach Efron as the main lead um it's made by a24 so you know maybe this will be a decent watch uh, an enjoyable thrilling watch but it is a whole lot more than that uh rather than being kind of about the success of the von Erich family it's more about sort of the tragedy of the Von Erich family and the many, many tough times that uh, the family had to go through, particularly the hardships of our main character, Kevin Von Erich, played by Zac Efron. And yeah, uh, like I said, this is a very, very tragic, emotional, gut-punching movie from not necessarily start to finish, but it just progressively gets more and more and more um, uh, d depressing as it goes on. And you just sort of lose more and more hope uh, as the movie progresses. And um, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a really, really good movie from start to finish. Um, and so I guess ta going through the family itself, of course, we have Zac Efron who plays as Kevin Von Erich. And I think he does an amazing job and shows that he's a lot more than uh, being the uh, main character in the, the high school musical movies, which, which is what a lot of people know him for being that teenage popular boy. But in this movie, he is a whole lot more than that. And I think when he steps into the shoes of our main character, Kevin Von Erich, uh, you don't feel you're not thinking about it being Zac Efron because he does such an amazing job here and he's able to convey so much emotion by doing not a whole lot like he he doesn't really have a whole lot of dialogue in this movie he's kind of one of more of the quiet brothers in this movie yet he is just able to do so much with so little and sh and just you can just really really feel his despair inside of him and his emotion um, and then of course we have a few of the other brothers you have 
Lance Von Erich, who's played by Maxwell Jacob Friedman. You have Kerry Von Erich, played by Jeremy, Jeremy Allen White. You have David Von Erich, played by Harrison Harris Dickinson. Uh, and then you have a, a few of the um, non-brothers. You have Pam, uh, Pam Ad Adkinson, played by Lily James. She's kind of the, uh, I guess, love interest in this movie who t turns into uh, our main character's wife. Uh, and then you have the... Uh, who's arguably actually kind of the main focus of this movie, Fritz von Erich, played by Holt McCollany, who, um, similar to Zac Efron, I think is, well, actually, probably more. I think he's the top contender in this movie for an Oscar nomination. He did just such an amazing job at playing that traditional fatherly role, that old-fashioned kind of uh, father who is really, really hard on his, uh, on his sons, and they all got to be working really, really hard and doing what he wants them to do, and he really wants them to be the best, basically, and, um, yeah, I just think that he did a really amazing job, uh, in this film. I'm not really familiar with much of these actors in here, but I think everybody did a really, really great job, and every brother in this movie, had their own hardships that they went through, and all had their time to have a moment in the spotlight. You have Lance, who's kind of the top dog brother. He's kind of the best, but we lose him very, very early, and that's kind of when uh, Kevin, played by Zac Efron, kind of has to take his role and, and be that top dog. And then you have uh, Carrie Von Erich, played by Jeremy Allen White, uh, and then you also have David Von Erich, played by Harrison Harris Dickinson, who's kind of more of one of the side brothers he's he does have his moment in the spotlight at, as far as the wrestling aspect goes but he has more of a passion for music and uh and and that kind of stuff not really so much sports so every brother kind of gets their moment in the spotlight here but our main focus is really on fritz von eric who like i said just does an incredible job at playing the fatherly role and then you also have lily james in here who is the um, love interest slash wife of our main, uh, uh, character, Kevin Von Eric, who I think she does a really jo good job, and out of all of the biopics that I've watched this year, I think this was the one where I think the love story actually did play an essential role in here, uh, with, like, with mo other movies like Napoleon, The Boys in the Boat, um, the Oppenheimer to, uh, Oppenheimer to a certain extent, but, um, it didn't, didn't bother me as much, but in, just in a lot of the biopics that I've watched this year in these drama movies, all of them had to throw in a love interest or some kind of love, uh, love story to it, and most of them I just really didn't care about, I thought were a waste of time, but in this movie I think it really, really did matter, because... Um, that part of the story was kind of our only escape from the tragedy. It was kind of only our only glimpse of hope where uh, the uh, uh, Lily James, who plays uh, Pam in this movie, is, uh, you know, sh she's a part of this family, obviously, but she's kind of our only glimpse of hope. And she is, obviously isn't suffering as much as the brothers or the other fam like main family members. And so... Throughout this movie, um, Kevin Von Erich, he, um, you know, ha has kids um, while he's go while he's do going through this uh, um, wrestling career. And really, his, o his only escape from all this tragedy that's going on is just being a father, which I thought that that was a really, really amazing subplot that I don't think a, real a lot of people have realized that it, it was it was kind of like his escape from tragedy or all this tragedy was just st stepping into that fatherly role and um, getting to be with his wife and kids throughout this movie, which I thought that that was a really, really incredible subplot in here. Um, and by the ending of the movie, that's kind of where he finds peace, where he's just like, you know what? I don't have to be the best. I don't have to be, um, you know, I, I don't have to be, um, I, I don't have to be the, the best all the time. Um, and he kind of just finds peace with himself just being his dad and his kids really are there to support him and there's this really emotional scene at the end where his kids are, you know, like, what, dad, why are you so sad? And they, they kind of comfort him and it's just such an amazing scene. There's so many emotional scenes in this movie that I could go into, but like I said, I don't have time for it right now, but all I gotta say is just go see this movie. This is an incredibly emotional, gut-punching movie, um... And so you know, you might shed you might shed some tears in here, especially if you're a wrestling fan or if you were very familiar with this family went uh, in the '80s. If you watched them uh, back then, but um, yeah, uh, the Iron Claw a huge huge surprise for me. Um, I do have uh, I guess before I leave off, I do have a few issues with 
with some of the character arcs. Uh, I think that the father's character arc, while I think that um, the actor did a, an amazing job at him, I thought that he was a little bit too cold-hearted in this movie, um, and like he didn't really have a whole lot of redeeming qualities. It was almost like when tragedy struck th throughout much of this movie, he kind of just ignored it and put it to the side, and he was just kind of like, "All right, next man up. You know who's gonna be who's gonna be the one to to step up and be a man." And like he he never really. It was almost like he never really took in any of uh, of what was like going on, and was just kind of like all right, let's, we're just going to keep getting through this. And so there wasn't a whole lot of redeeming qualities about him. He was just kind of really, really hard on everybody throughout the entire movie and didn't really show much emotion. And I wish that we did see more of that. Uh, I wish that he wasn't just this really, really cold hearted, um, hard ass throughout most of the movie, which I, I just wish there was a little bit more balance there, but that was kind of my only, um, minor complaint there, but otherwise, the Iron Claw, a huge, huge surprise for me for the uh, for the year. Uh, I, like I said, I could go in a whole lot more depth in this movie, but I think that all I can really leave with saying is go watch this movie if you haven't, because I think you'll really like it. Whether you're a wrestling fan or not, I'm not a big wrestling fan by any means, and I still really love this movie, so go check it out. This is definitely going to go down as one of my uh, one of the best movies of 2023 for me, not just one of my favorites. Um, and so, yeah, go check it out. The Iron Claw, I think I'm going to give it uh, a very, very um, uh, high 9.5 out of 10. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, I believe I gave it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And so, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a 9.5 out of 10. I had very, very few issues with this. And I think this was a movie that actually could have benefited from being longer, actually. I think that... Um, if it, if it was longer, maybe we could have uh, gone, uh, we could have even gone more into some of our uh, characters in the family and developed them even more. But uh, so, which which is weird because some of the biopics this year, people complained about how they were too long. But in this movie, I felt like it, in, in some aspects, it was too short. I feel like there might, it could have benefited from being longer. But anyway, uh, I'm just nitpicking here. Uh, I'm just. Uh, there, there, like I said, there's so much to get into, and I'm probably forgetting a lot to talk about here, but that's it. This was a really, really great movie, as you, as I'm sure you could probably tell from me messing up a whole lot, because anytime it's a really good movie, I just really, really struggle with these reviews. So, The Iron Claw, go check it out, and that's all I got for you guys. Stay tuned. We got a few end-of-the-year rankings to do left, and then we can finally start talking about 2024 movies, because I feel like I will not... <laughs> I, I, I am really, really sad to let uh, go of 2023 because it was such a great year in, all, in a, a lot of different ways. So I think that's pretty much it for the review. Stay tuned, like I said, and I think that's it. Like and subscribe, guys, and I will see you next time.